Welcome everybody to another episode episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. Um, hope everybody's doing well and it looks like we will be wrapping up season six here and getting to what we'll call the finale, um, part one and part two. So uh, it's been a long run for, for us, long run for you guys, but it's definitely been informative to me. Um, brought back a lot of feelings for me personally as far as Star Wars lore and just uh, can't wait to get in this last part of season six here. But before we get going here, uh, quick run around the room for all our new viewers if anybody are tuning into us or watching us um we have our um legacy fan but right below me here which will be our guy of a, of a thousand names admiral tarken uh to my left or right whichever way you're looking at it we have a very very og member of the nerd cyclopedia which we'll get into and explain to you guys a little uh, real shortly here dp brown and as well uh to the catacorner bottom left of me we'll say or bottom right whichever way you're looking we have our guy the producer another og neurocyclopedia member hitch and uh, obviously as you see my name here uh, i'm t mitts and i'll be the showrunner for this but uh like i said happy to be back here with me and the nerds here and can't wait to wrap this up but before we even dive into this and any uh, news comments we have for this week let's let dp let you know where to find us at Nerdcyclopedia.com, people, make sure that you're going on that site and getting all links to all our favorite social media platforms um, at Nerdcyclopedia on Twitter, Instagram, and also on Facebook. Make sure that you are, um, when you're on Facebook, you're joining our Facebook group, Carbon App Bounty BS, the Star Wars group. Okay. Um, also, leave us some feedback while you're on the site, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Um, if you are listening to us on your car and on your radio and everything, make sure that you are following us on or subscribing, I should say, um, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, um, Stitcher, TuneIn, um, iHeartRadio, uh, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there, Nerd Cyclopedia. Um, also, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure that you are hitting that subscribe button because anytime that and also hitting that notification button, anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Appreciate that. And uh, like I said, guys, I know that uh, we were talking a little bit off air, which we'll drop into this as well in the video, some of these clips of some of our kind of just candid discussions. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to jump right into it. We have our resident 10 out of 10 fan, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Uh, Tar Ken. So we're going to. 10 out of Ken. Off. That's 10 out of Ken. <laughs> 10 out of Ken. 10 out of Ken. So yeah, we're, we're going to. We'll let him lead off this uh, fin this finale of season six. I mean, he's really excited about it, really like it. So, uh, Ken, just give us your, your initial thoughts so far about what you saw. So, Yoda. Yoda. Like, he's a real player. Like, he knows, he knows how to work the room. I mean, he did such a good job of going after the, the final solution basically he needed to find the absolute evil that was really messing up his game and he fought himself so that he's basically reliving the whole you know bring only bring in which which you uh came in with so you're actually the biggest battle that we all have with ourselves is ourselves and i think that was the name of the final episode was fear is what you bring in with you. So the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. And that is what you bring to the game. And he brought that full scale. I actually didn't expect him to actually fight a golem version of himself. Uh -huh. There was a whole, I mean, the, the writers of this series are total nerds. I mean, they pull from every aspect of nerd world, geek world, science fiction, fiction, um, old earth, middle earth, everything is pulled in here because it all relates. It's all human. It's all there. It's, it's the struggles we work with every day, finding the, the fear inside ourselves. And the battle between Yoda and Yoda, I mean, that was, that was legit. I mean, I, I loved that. That was like, that was better than anything I saw with Dooku and Anakin, although that was cool how they foreshadowed the whole decapitation piece. Oh, yeah. sorry. I haven't gotten there yet, but that was in that vision. Um, I mean, there was so much in there that just as a as a super fan, um, a lot of a lot of questions were answered. The whole arc with Cypher Diaz and finding out why he found the need 
to develop that army because he saw that coming. He saw this fall. He saw this battle between the Sith and the Republic. And he said, the Republic is not set up to fight this. So the clone army needed to be done. And I mean, just so much cool stuff. I don't know. It is. This was the best season of new Star Wars to me. This was, this had a lot of nice tidbits to it and you got to watch this one. And I recommend actually watching it backwards because I watched it forwards, but then I watched the episodes backwards and it actually linked them a little better. Do it. Be a geek. Watch it backwards. That's your homework for today, guys. Yeah. Yes. What are you thinking, Hitch? I'm thinking that I, I refuse any and all offers made to me by this show to not hate Jar Jar Binks. And I don't care how cool they make him. I don't care if they make him useful by the plot. You know, he's he's a super – he's an intergalactic player. I still don't like him. And, and I want to say this for the record, that because Tai Chi is my family business, I want to say that it was excellent to see that Jar Jar Binks was doing Tai Chi – uh, in a Star Wars show. I really enjoyed that. Um, apart from the Yoda um, vision quest, which I thought was really excellent and handled well and, and explained exactly what the real stakes were. Uh, you know, there's another game on top of the game that, um, that Sidious is playing. And I like that overlay because Sidious can only see the physical reality. And I like that explanation. It made me satisfied. I enjoyed that a lot. This, this Sifo DS mystery and the Pike Syndicate and this crazy person you know, that Dooku force chokes. Uh, this episode is a real highlight of the series for me. <clears throat> I think it's episode 10, The Lost One. That's what it's called. Just very, very excellent. Maybe the investigation Obi-Wan should have been doing in episode 2. Uh, maybe it would have been nice to <laughs> see something like that. Uh, and Dooku has to get directly involved, and he's threatened by uh, Sidious. This foreshadowing that Dooku will not be... Uh, like, like he's getting, he's running out of chances, basically, uh, not to mess this up. Really excellent, excellent work there. I, I like the Pike Syndicate. The Pikes are cool, right? They're neat. Yeah. Neat little aliens. Uh, and Liam Neeson showed up again, right? Yeah. My guy. I My love guy. Liam Neeson. Yeah. Hey, he's, 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 he's still making time for, um, I mean, the other ones like Sam Jackson <laughs> won't make that time, but you know, if, if, um, Neeson, <laughs> Liam Neeson come. If- could you imagine if it really was Sam Jackson doing Mace Windu and he's just reading the script and being like, I'm second to a frog. <laughs> oh, man. He just walks out of there and they're like, we're going to get somebody else to do Mace Windu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was a, um, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go I mean, ahead, it's Shaft. Up. He's Shaft and he doesn't, the other guy and the other character gets the love story, right? It's hilarious. All right, I'm done. I'm not going to, not going to do any more of the- break-ins on sam while he's trying to talk not gonna try to jump in on him when we were um like doing text messaging back and forth you know i um text hitch like he's gonna love these episodes <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna love the first half of the um the, the, the season is his favorite character you know Dark in there Dark doing <laughs> yeah. why too like, this is club. not this is not a season where there's a lot of extra space either you know that's pretty pretty limited real estate and they give him two <laughs> two episodes which you know that's 40 minutes that's a lot yeah, of that's, time. that's that's a that's a lot of that's it that, that takes a lot of time too <laughs> yeah mace mace windu finally gets his solo you know and they pair him up with um good old jar jar so it was, they got it, so well it was like uh, yeah yeah they got along like you know um laverne and shirley you know eyes and harriet you know I think um, that what happens Andy here. Andy Griffin and um, Barney fight. <laughs> and, and Bart- I think I think part of what happens here is that Mace can see the future, and he sees two paths in front of him: one, the death of all the younglings and the destruction of the Jedi Order; two, a life where he's going around the galaxy with Jar Jar Binks, and he has to choose. And he, I think, he chose correctly. Is really what what this all comes down to. Yeah. It was a um, it, it was a good season. Um, the Jar Jar stuff. I mean, that that the, the it, it really took me out a little bit, but the Yoda stuff brought me back. I do love what 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 Kim was talking about the finding out the origins of the why the clones was created. 
you know, that was very, very astute. And like, you know, Ken was saying, bringing like, you know, different tropes in and everything, you know, into the story and stuff to really find out. You don't really get that in a lot of TV shows as to reasons why certain things are being done. You know, the only thing I can think of right now is Lost um, when they actually you know, go back into the story and find out and, and, and find out reasons why certain things were done. This is sort of doing the same thing. You find out the origin of the why, you know, and instead of the mechanics of, okay, this is just is accepted as it is no explanation. That's it. Now you're finding out the why of why these clones were created. And that was very, 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 very interesting. Um, you know, the, the Yoda stuff with, and it certainly definitely reminded me of Lord of the Rings with Gollum you know um going back and forth and everything um and i think it ended off it ended off well again another season of um you know just deep storytelling you know um especially the back half of it you know the the the, the fall is happening and um yoda has to go find himself that was a thing i didn't really expect i thought I mean, all this time I thought yoda i mean he was already who he was but he still has to find out more you know about himself and he has to face who 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 he is um and that was really interesting to see as far as yoda because he's the wise one of the jedi council so for him to actually still have more to do just just it's such great character development on a really good character you know um so me coming in as a casual fan you know me just thinking okay yoda's the wise one they listen to him so they just basically do everything he says to add this extra layer to Yoda and for them to solo out Yoda, you know, in this aspect was, it was a very, very good back half of the season. And and how about how Yoda dismissed Darth Bane? Just yeah. totally got through that. So we mentioned all along how this is kind of video game-ish. So you have to solve a puzzle to get through to the next level. Yoda dismissed Darth Bane that unlocked the tomb so he could get down and move on with his trials. Right. right. The most, I don't, I don't believe it being that easy, but you know, yeah, well, I think it was, it's, it's nah, freaking Darth, Darth Bane. I don't know. We get in the Sith floor. I don't know about that one. Darth well, Bane's tough. Darth, yeah, Darth Bane is also dead. And Yoda. <laughs> I ain't so tough. Oh. Just, just totally dismissed him. He he poofed into ether, and his tomb opened, and Yoda moved on. So it was like Indiana Jones. It was like 2001: A Space Odyssey. I mean, it was all these different challenges that the hero has to complete to move on to the next level. Uh, it, I mean, Yoda was on his own like Dark Forces gameplay. I mean, he was he was playing it. I mean, it was, it was really good. And that, I don't know. I, I found this, this season to be the most lucrative. I think they should do something with this season. I think they should make this live. I can't wait to watch season five, seven. I mean, how, how many, how many years went, went between six and seven? I want to say seven or no, six. I think it's just, this came out in 2020. 13. What? The 2013 like, to 14 when it ended, and then 2021. Yeah, yeah, 2020 was when the, um, the last season came out. Yeah. So this came out in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I can't wait because I don't, I mean, I haven't watched forward, so I'm a total virgin here. I haven't looked at any of this. It's going to be good. Maybe we should do a live watch party. Can we, <laughs> can we do that? You can do it. We, we just can't show it on, it? we can't show it on screen for um, copyright. Yeah, but who's gonna say? Who's gonna come after us? Disney. Trump. They 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 would shut it down. <laughs> Disney. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, the they, is they, Disney. They, they have those voice voice YouTube, algorithm yeah, things. For, yeah. For the record, we have no plans of doing that. Disney. We have no <laughs> plans at all. Oh, oh, of you're doing that, that at all. I'm taking my glasses off to make sure they can see with the retinal scan. <laughs> see my face. Like, that was just a do. suggestion, Disney. That was <laughs> no, just it wasn't. It wasn't even a suggestion. It was a joke. A very big joke. joke. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please don't cut us off. Yeah, right. Don't cancel us. But, um, <laughs> yeah. and don't don't let Mickey Mouse come after us. You know how Mickey is, man. You, you could know. you could let the font slide. You could let that slide. Yeah. But do, 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 do that Mickey voice hitch. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> You're gonna take <laughs> down the live watch, or I'm gonna come <laughs> down there, and we're gonna settle things my way. <laughs> oh, oh, so am I, am I goofy? Oh, well, I thought we could air that, Mickey. <laughs> I never gave you permission to air that. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We might be able to run with that. I think we're already, I think just doing those voices is kind of <laughs> already where we, want, where we didn't want to be. But it's okay. What, what, I'll have a letter on my uh, doorstep tomorrow. But <laughs> it's, it's already right. there. Just, you're going to knock, get a knock on the door. You're going to be like, who's there? Hi, goons. Hi, yeah. goons. What? <laughs> with Mickey in the middle. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes you got to crack skulls to make things <laughs> run right around here. <laughs> <laughs> we have a safe Millions of people pay thousands of dollars to go to. Do you know how much money I made selling turkey legs to Hicks from Tennessee last year? <laughs> None! And that's why we had to release the Clone War. <laughs> because we needed more money. For trash bags. All you, people. you know what? You know what's funny? I can visualize them showing up like Roger Rabbit with two real people in like a cartoon. Seriously. Literally between them. Seriously. Yeah. Literally. You know, you know what's crazy about these episodes? I really realized though. So when we get into that episode with Qui Gon, um, until Qui Gon shows up and really starts talking to him through the Force, this is really the first time Jedi, Jedi ascended into that um, really nether state of being able to live through the Force. So I know a lot of people say that Yoda's the wise one, and this is why I was always a Qui Gon fan. I think Qui Gon was the most advanced Jedi. I think he was the wisest. Um, although, you know, Master Yoda maybe might be the strongest with the Force due to, you know, genetics, I really think as far as the humanoids, that Qui-Gon was the smartest. He was the first Jedi to ascend in, I guess, this current, um, you know, this current uh, era of Jedi that was able to ascend through the Force and be able to speak, be able to project Force ghosts, because later on we see that he teaches Yoda that. And we kind of alluded to the, some of that uh you know, in, in later movies, some of the books, but yeah, Qui Gon was really the first to to study the Force beyond life or beyond death, excuse me, and um, kind of you know transfer or even persevere through his death into the Force. So I, I really found that really unique. That this is the first time seeing you know a Jedi being able to speak um, from you know from from death or yeah from beyond basically. yeah yeah. So you know it, it was just, that was really unique that they tied this in. You know, like we're saying. Through so many storylines, and it's even present in the in the final sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty rad that Yoda doesn't believe that he's talking to actual Qui Gon. He thinks it's a trick the whole time until like the very end. It's just like you don't know, imagine like you know someone trying to be a fortune teller to Yoda. No, <laughs> <laughs> just no. <laughs> you know what's crazy? You know if we never it's like playing devil's advocate. But what if this is like Sidious playing a mind trick on him? How rad would that be? Because we know he did it to Ren. I mean, I don't know if he's strong enough to get Yoda's mind, but what if he really did that? How crazy would that? Well, well he did. Him and Dooku did, right? He played. Yeah. He played him. He he, but it didn't work. Yoda turned the tables on him right at the end. Insidious is like, oh, damn it, work. Yeah, we will not. So interesting. Why why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he go a different route? Why wouldn't Sidious say, "Okay, we're not going to get over on this guy"? I guess he did, but we'll we'll figure that out now. When we watch Revenge of the Sith, we'll see how Sidious tried to turn the tables on Yoda, and really, instead of using magic, he tried to physically confront him. Like yeah. basically, it was an all-out fight between Sidious and Yoda. There was no magic. There was no deception. It was just physical. So maybe he felt that was the ta that was the table that needed turned. Maybe the the magic wasn't going to work. It worked on every other Jedi, right? He I, th I think it was like you were saying. Oh, it was this kind of like you know like the duelist, and um you know, and that takes it back to kind of you know archaic you know uh, Roman civilization things like that. I mean, the art of the duel is when you find that you know that competition, that level that you are. You know, whatever, regardless of whatever tricks, it's just hand to hand. It's combat at that point. Kind of yeah. like even the Mandalorians do it. So I really think it was more of an appreciation for one another that they pulled the sabers out before he started using the lightning and things like that. Yes. You know? Yes. They they put all that magic crap aside and yeah. said, we're going back to basics here and we're just going to fight. 
because that's where it is. It's like enter the dragon. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And I, we see that in revenge of the Sith. We see this, this, this battle, like Obi-Wan and Anakin, just battle. Keep in mind, keep in mind, we can discuss revenge of the Sith because believe it or not, right now where we are on the timeline, this is literally about to happen. I mean, Within we're within days with this ha- with this happening, so it's an egg yeah. about to hatch. I mean, we are yeah, so close. And now Yoda knows. So Yoda knows that he that effectively, you know, he's going to be living this living this ascetic life. He's going to be disappearing from public, regardless of what happens with the rest of the Clone Wars. And he knows that the Clone Army has been ordered by the Sith. And he knows there's some grand deception out there. It's no wonder, you know, Yoda is sort of like ready to go when things get serious it makes a lot of sense in retrospect and, and this fills in a lot of gaps with like with this with this set of episodes here the fact that yoda's like oh i've been talking to qui-gon Jin, and guess what we're gonna fade away now instead of dying and getting burned that's how it's gonna be from now on that makes a lot more sense now as something that's been talked about more than just sort of plopped in at the end of a movie it was pretty wow. long already, and you really didn't, you know, you want more explanation, but are you, you're kind of, t- it's like three in the morning, you know. Yeah. It's late, it's late. It's time to go home. That'd be interesting. So if, we, if they did a Yoda anthology or a Yoda series, you would want it to be between, not his death, but between, you know, three and four, essentially. Because we want to know what happened when he escaped the, t- the, the temple with Coruscant, who he took with him. Was it Grogu? Was it any younglings? I mean... Those are stories that, you know, based on what they've done with the Mandalorian, that they can literally, you know, yeah. just, just peel your head back. You know, who mm-hmm. knows who he took with him? You know, I'm sure they had a cruiser, an, an Imperial cruiser he took with him. So I'm guessing that it wasn't just him on that ship. Mm-hmm. No, couldn't have been. It couldn't have been, no. Because he's seen younglings, so he would have definitely grabbed some people. And, and what's up with him and him, uh, him and R2? Like, they're best buds. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like putting the scanner up and making sure Yoda's like cool, and Yoda's like, "No, you stay here because you need to be safe." And then in Re- Empire Strikes Back, beating the shit out of him with a with a cane. I mean, mm-hmm. come on, what what the hell, what, what's up with that? It is it is sort of funny when he like leaves him behind. He's like, "Oh man, <clears throat> this droid is the thing in the universe that Anakin Skywalker loves the most." And would be the most devastated if something happened to this droid. This is the number one thing. One. This droid. If something happens to this droid, man, he'll go right to the dark side. Good good point. Because you know what? R2 protects Luke countless times. And who's Luke? Anakin's son. So Anakin and Yoda and R2, maybe they're the are they the they're the main characters. I mean, they're the that's the whole thing. Those right. three, without those three being connected and knowing what the other one was going to do, we'd have nothing. Right. And I, I believe R2 is created as far as a character to be like a dog, you know, a man's best friend, because literally he is very loyal, you know, compassionate. He's even at some point very protective of his owner, which, you know, if anybody has had, you know, children come into a household with a dog, they become just as protecting of them yep. as they are maybe their most loyal owner. So I think that that was the idea when they created the character of maybe oh. having that droid kind of, you know, assimilate what like a well, a dog or a pet would do. For well, what is what is missing from this? Right. It's a serial. It's a space Western. Right. What is missing from this is the horse. A dog. The horses trigger oh. trigger. Oh. Right. Right. The Lone Ooh. Ranger's uh, horse. Yes. Mm-hmm. So these like like R two D two sort of fills that role in. He's yes. like he's like like the the mount for for Anakin in this series, and and like uh, to a lesser extent Chewbacca does that, but it's not the same exact thing. Uh, but that's kind of the role that these these characters play, and it's it's super neat to see like. You know, Yoda sort of has the right idea that, yeah, it would be really bad if something that was important to Anakin, if something bad were to happen to it. But he's just missing <laughs> missing the rest of the layers. <laughs> Skywalker is uh, hiding from him, so kind of funny there. Uh, I, I, I'm not of the opinion that this is some sort of ruse from the Dark Lord. I, I believe this to be legit uh, because we know that Yoda is le- actually successful in doing this. 
and we know that Yoda has the ability to talk to um, the dead living. people. Well, as the dead person and talk to dead people. And we know that he's able to affect the physical realm because we see that happen. So mm. we know that, that this is all comes true. So I think it isn't probably a plot. It's probably legit real. Yeah. It's just weird, though, you know, when you see Darth Bane and kind of like the Sith trials, it makes you think, you know, you know, kind of like Mortis or when they go into, um, you know, some of those Sith caves, even in the EU, or as we call it, you know, I call it canon. I don't call it expanded universe or whatever they want to call it now. But, uh, you know, when you look at that, you know, when they went and found these Sith holocrons and went into these Sith, you know, these pyramids and these these caverns and whatnot, kind of like you see at Exegol. You know the Sith; they have the ability to be amplified by those by those relics, kind of like Jedi when they went to um, uh, Ulam. Uh, Ulam, I'm sorry. Um, so it's kind of I feel like maybe he had maybe not a full effect, but he sensed it for sure. I mean, if he knew what Maul was doing all the way across the galaxy, I'm sure Yoda was was somebody in his eyes, and it's like a chess piece, like we're saying. He kind of let him do his thing, but I'm sure with him being you know involved with Sith and even if they were visions, I'm sure that he had some kind of input in that. Well, Yoda has access to a layer of reality that uh, Sidious doesn't have access to because the, the right. Sith are all about the preservation of the physical and, and Yoda is, you know, these, the wills or whatever they, you right. know, whatever these yeah. figures are, are basically sort of a spirituality because you have to have a sense of self and a sense of the soul to transcend death because if death is the end of physicality and you are all about the physical world when you die that's that so how could you possibly have uh, a consciousness that carries on beyond that point right uh it's 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 an interesting thing to sort of sort of puzzle out um you know from a metaphysical perspective but it's almost as if there's like a um like an extra dimension to this chess game that it's not that Sidious isn't like, he just can't play it because it's not something that would ever occur to him as the Sith Lord. Right. I mean, isn't it? So thinking about that. So evil needs to have a physical presence. Okay. So if you want to be evil, you have to be there, but Yoda doesn't need that. He can he can he can do his thing from the from the nether nether world, but right. city is so concentrated on the physical aspect of it, and that's the evil. That's the material evil piece, and that's that's the way religion is set up. Satan is completely focused on physical so cool. flesh and blood, <clears throat> being able to touch things, destroy things. Whereas the other side, the light side, God is clouds and, you know, moving, you know, feelings, feelings, not so much flesh. Right. Well, think yeah. about, you, know, you know, think about any, we could talk about any number of historical figure uh, that would fit this, but think about um, Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr., right? These are, are people who are, <laughs> Um, they're killed, right? But they're extremely powerful, more powerful perhaps than they were in life, because now you can't you can't do anything to their dignity. It exists in a in a realm that it be, is beyond the the possibility of people to touch. You know what I mean? Right. And real evil, like Hitler. Once once it's gone, once the physical presence of Hitler is gone, so is the power. Yeah. Be regardless of what people are saying, you know, if there are like you know, Nazis or white supremacists. Now they have no power. They have nothing. They're, they're zero compared to, like you said, Hitch, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, God, Jesus Christ. I mean, these are people that, that will now live forever and have power forever because they choose that realm, not the physical realm. Well, from a from a standpoint of of metaphysics, the reason that is is because truth is more powerful than falsehood, and right. and you can say things that are true that just sort of ring true, but you don't have to. But that doesn't mean that the person that says them 
speaks the truth all the time. Thomas Jefferson is a really excellent example of this because all men are created equal is something that is fundamentally true and rings throughout eternity. But Thomas Jefferson was sort of, a, sort of a real, you know, he sucked <laughs> as a human being. I'm not like, he was terrible. He were an awful human being. So, so that's something um, that, that it's an interesting metaphor that star Wars is playing out here where through violence, you can create a, an opposition force that is so much more powerful than you, you ever could have conceived of that you would have been better off not doing the violence in the first place. And so by doing the violence itself, that act undoes you. And I think you just quoted Obi-Wan Kenobi. Probably did. Yeah, half the things, did. look, half the things I say are effectively Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> and Jar Jar Binks, because and you Jar Jar Binks. Gungan, Gungan right now. <laughs> like your tongue's flapping around and your eyes are like up here. <laughs> been breathing underwater for a couple weeks now yeah but i mean yeah that discussion we kind of went on about leads us to a really interesting point even about uh sidious that we'll we'll discuss right here after the break so guys hold on go grab a drink and we'll be right back here with uh, the back half of carbonate bounty bs we have two and two now if you love blood gore and violence please watch invincible were you disappointed by Mortal Kombat Blood and Violence? Do you enjoy Blood and Violence as a cartoon? Well, come check out this cartoon on Amazon. Amazon just got some really good stuff as far as this show. You got Omni Man, you got the fake Teen Titans, you got the fake Justice League. Man, what more could you want? Come watch us on the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. The accolade to come out. That's going to be so hey, Mitch, I saw your t shirt. I just wanted you to see this. Look at that. I just finished this tonight. That's awesome. That yeah, is. It is decent. Wow. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's the first moon man, man mooned landing on uh, the moon, depicted in plastic and paint. That's sweet. That's awesome. really good. pretty cool. Nice. I'm building a Saturn V rocket also. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my uh, my middle son has a ton of Star Wars Master Lego sets. He's done the Death Star twice. He's done two Imperial Star Cruisers. I mean, those are things I can't even imagine to do. I think they're like, what, 8,000 pieces each? Like, I wouldn't even begin to touch those, literally. I don't know how he did it. I don't have the patience. I mean, I know they do them easier now, so they're in bags, but still... There's no chance I'm doing one of those. I wanted to, but kids do whatever they want. Yeah, okay. they don't have I... bills to pay. Yeah, right. Yeah, they don't have bills to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that All how right. that works? Are you guys are you yes. guys serious? They don't have. They don't have bills <clears throat> to pay. Fortunately, I guess it's a part of life. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, it's okay. Yep. But uh, yeah, guys, jumping back into the episode, so welcome back from break here. Uh, interesting point that we brought up discussing, you know, about, you know, the transference of good and evil. And it kind of brings in the point that you see um, sprinkled in The Mandalorian and we see it in the final sequel trilogy. Obviously, we know that at this point, um, we really don't know what happens as far as Sith. But we find out through kind of our discussion here that basically Sidious knows his body is dying. This is the beginning of it, um, and you know it's. We'll, we'll get a little. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but obviously, the scarring due to the you know deflection of his own lightning is the beginning of the basically the end of his body. So we kind of see the sprinklings of whether Snoke be the clone that they're trying to make of him. But you know, we, we kind of see this like Hitch was saying about evil cannot live on. Um, to my knowledge, you really don't see any Sith ghosts. So as far as this. Um, yeah, it, it, this is really interesting because I know when they did wrote the final sequel, there were two different ways they were going to go with it. Um, Colin Trevorrow's episode nine was going to do more about the spiritual kind of version of the Sith and, and what Sidious can do to the mind. But uh, they went along with the whole, like we're saying, getting a new body because his body's dying. And, you know, so it's unique that he can't really transfer his essence, essentially, you know, mentally into somebody. So... He did it physically. And the Colin Trevorrow episode nine they were, were, was opposite. He was going to do it mentally. 
rather than the physical route they did it. So it's two different takes on Star Wars, but this definitely let the roots down to what you see as far as Sidious and as his appearance after being thrown, you know, I don't know, 100 stories from the scaffolding of the Death Star. So at least. Very interesting. Yeah. And once again, if he survived that, Mace Windu died. Come on. Come <laughs> on. I'm not hearing it. I'll just Wait, bring him Mace back. Die. That, he's that's, not dead. They just need to bring him back and stop playing these games. He's going to come back somewhere when they redo, when they fix uh, seven, eight, nine. Then, then it'll be he'll be he'll be there somewhere. I, I just feel like for that to be true, the emperor has to have made a mistake. He didn't you know, really shock him to death. You think? I don't think he killed him from that. I don't think he, the force lightning killed him. You think so? Uh, did the emperor make a mistake? I don't know. I mean, what when, when was the emperor's first mistake? The emperor's first mistake was like was assuming that he that he could kill Luke Skywalker in front of Anakin Skywalker and get away with it, right? That was it. That's it. Everything up until then is almost perfect, right? So yeah. for for him to have been directly involved in the uh, attempted murder of the number one and two seed of the Jedi, right? Number one and two. But it failed twice. And then know. still run, run stuff for 20 years, right? Look at Maul, though. I mean, it's similar. You know? That's true. He, he, he could have shut yeah. off the force a little bit. He could have just... I mean, he could. He was, he was sure he was badly injured. I mean, I'll believe it no really matter what run, they do. Oh, who was really running things with the Empire? Who was really calling the shots? Well, the Emperor seems to have been busy... Very distracted with attempting to extend extend his life through cloning. His life, right? right? So, so, so probably his corrupt, mendacious, idiot minions. So probably they're doing a real shit job <laughs> because they're idiots, right? <laughs> so when you select for loyalty instead of competence, that's when you do that. And when you do that at a hundred million levels of of uh, management, <laughs> eventually the people you get at the rubber meets the road part are not great. So probably that's what's going on. But he's busy doing that. Vader's got his own, you know, Vader's got Vader's own project, which suddenly becomes, you know, finding Luke Skywalker. And Tarkin's running the Death Star project. And pretty much all these things, you know, the Emperor doesn't have to do all that much anymore, probably. Run this down. Yeah, and Tarkin's not only running the Death Star, but he's running the Empire. I mean, at the table, who's everyone look, who's, who is everyone looking at at the table? Tarkin, right? And he's calling all the shots, and he's handling the human aspect of the entire galactic empire. And ultimately, that's that's going to be your bottom line. I mean, Vader has his own agenda. The Emperor is, like you said, Hitch. He's just trying to extend his life, so he's not really worried. He knows the galactic empire is in place. He's off on his own thing. Vader is supporting him when he can and so it's it's Tarkin is the ultimate leader right now the ultimate power in the galaxy and and he freaking blows up for god's sakes how stupid give that man a second chance why do you love this 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 mass murderer so much what is your why do you love Tarkin so much i mean you know if he's he, I'll put can... it to you this way. If the Emperor showed up on screen in Episode 6 and looked dead straight at the camera and said, it's not like I'm the one that blew up Alderaan, <laughs> I mean, you'd have to be like, that's actually true. It's inconvenient, but it's true. Dark is so we bad. Saying, so we're saying that, that the destruction of Alderaan is 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 like the, the turning point? Is like, like Is that when he crossed the line? Is that the line? It feels like... if. Destroying a planet for, you know, pretty specious reasons, right? Group punishment by itself is a war crime, first of all. So you cannot do collective punishment. That is wrong. Uh, second of all, uh, what, was Leia's, what was Leia's crime apart from, you know, flying in a ship with a piece of paper she's not supposed to have? She wasn't even on Alderaan. Yeah, None of that stuff happened there. After, after Labor Day. She wore white after Labor Day. That was her problem. So Alderaan gets it, and and I think that that is, you know, that's pretty that's pretty heinous. So I don't like Tarkin because of that, and you know Leia also says that he he stinks. 
And you know there's got to be some truth some truth to that because that bites. Everybody sort of goes like, Woo! when she says that, you know what I mean? Everybody sort of knows, like, he just smells bad. He gets away with it because he's an old man, and I guess old people smell bad, according to the Star Wars universe. <laughs> well, keep in mind as well, we're, as we're getting to the end here of, of the Clone Wars, this is when the shift happens, meaning the clones become stormtroopers and, and troopers, and they become, you know, humanoids, and they're not as intelligent as these clones from... Uh, an elite bounty hunter so as ken says this is where kind of the stupidity happens as you get these soldiers that are programmed to be something and essentially you start drafting you know humanoids or whatever the species are under these helmets criminals fill roles yeah <laughs> yeah fill roles to what they really aren't used to you know you're throwing people basically drafting people into a military that they're not ready for and you see the failings of it so. who, who are they gonna fight I mean, really, this is the thing about about the emp- about about history that that's so wild. When you think about like the Roman emperor, like the the most the most dangerous thing to a, the Roman emperor was a really 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 effective general with a really powerful army, right? So how how do you eliminate that? Well, if you control the whole galaxy and there are there's nobody now to come against you, why would you want to have this extremely intelligent, independent minded army just laying about? For anybody to just grab and create a power center around themselves that is not the Emperor. I mean, in my opinion, it makes sense to get rid of the clones because they're too good. And why wouldn't you want an incompetent army? It's just administrative. It's not It's not conquest anymore. It's not, you know, it's not real, like, it's not like World War II level combat. You know what I mean? All these little, all these battles that happen now with the Empire, like Vietnam's, and you don't necessarily need a surplus of armed to the teeth mercenaries that are, you know, Django fetish in their uh, abilities. That's just dangerous, dangerous, dangerous to have that around. Right. I mean, what, winning an empire is a very different thing than governing an empire. And and I think the Palpatine knows that, which is also to his credit as a man of evil. Yeah. Okay. What about this? Ladies and gentlemen, I have a new point deduction on a movie. <laughs> I've taken episode down 0.5. I'm going to drop it down to an 8.5, yeah. Which episode now? Episode 7. Oh, wow. I really liked it. That's going on 8.5. And the reason we're talking about the... I'm just thinking about the Death Star and everything, and I have to take a 0.5 for Starkiller Base. I have to. I'm sorry. It was like it was like too cheap knockoff of the Death Star and just, yeah. 0.5 for Starkiller Base, unfortunately. So you, you have it here. Episode 7 has now been delegated down to 8.5 due to Starkiller Base. It was just a ripoff. And nah. the more I think about it, the more I watch it, it's just like, eh. And yet, and yet for me, all of this sifo stuff puts new purpose into Obi-Wan's boondoggle of a detective story from Episode 2. And so I find myself giving Episode 2 a half a point back. Which we is... are. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we are. Look how this changes when we watch it. Yeah, you know what's weird? It's kind of like we could have watched this before this stuff and got into it. Because honestly, it changes. Saying stuff like this really changes my opinion on how I rated movies, how I view them. Because they did such a good job of kind of like, you know, even Ken was saying earlier, just kind of knitting the blanket, crocheting the blanket perfectly. Before there were spots and patches, now mm-hmm. they're literally meshing it all together. That's a great metaphor. Sense. Yeah. So. Great analogy. Yeah. 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 Well, we got yeah. the um got the next batch of episodes left. Yeah, guys. We're so yeah, we're 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 at the end here. So we're just going to get, jump right into it. We're gonna start with episode or excuse me, season seven. So we'll just call it the final season. Uh and we'll kind of do a long and a short run because there's a long arc and then a shorter arc, which is the short arc is obviously the finale, and that's the great one. So we'll start off with everybody. We'll go one to seven, and then the final will be eight to twelve. Because literally, the last actually it says right here we should go one to nine, then can. Revenge of the Sith, right. then 10, 11, 12. We can so, do that if you want to. If you want to break it up, or if you just want to go into it and finish it. The monster. Do- that means the monster at the end of the room is two weeks away. Yeah, we can do it that way, or just, we can. Let's um. Let's 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 split it up like that. So, because I, I think we're inching to get into revenge of the we Sith. Are. I let's, am. <laughs> yeah. let, let's do one through nine, 
and then um you know let's just just finale it off with revenge of the sith and then the um the last couple episodes of yeah, yeah i like that breakdown we'll yeah. do that that's good that's yeah let's good. do that for sure i like it that's that's good and we finally get to episode three because i know everybody's been waiting for it it's been I don't even know no, how many forever. Months. I never it thought is, we would yeah. get it to. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's been, been such a before the pandemic. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was like before the, when the pandemic. You know going. what? This we gotta wear. Fine. Hold on. I know. What, 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 what do you do, Ted? You, you, you gotta you gotta wear a Corona mask for this. <laughs> Think about it in a time capsule. You know when you know children yeah. see this. You know forty years from now and they see like what happened? Why are they wearing masks? Never yeah. would have guessed. All right, episode two we did on uh, episode two. January, the right? episode two special we recorded. Oh, I edited it on Saturday, January sixteenth. man! So wow. it's been about five I, months. Of oh the wow! Jeez. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. That's crazy, though. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Time, but time flying. That's the thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's fun. So um yes. good you good job hanging in there, guys. I know you really wanted to dive into to, to Revenge of the Sith when we after watching that episode too. So it was this was a sacrifice to now watch here, the uh, whole course we, season. Uh, we want everyone clicking the su- subscribe <laughs> button. We want we want our listenership to like quadruple. Yeah. Come on. Everybody yeah. I mean, we have to, yeah. 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 We've made it. We made it. We we wow. we topped over. Yeah. So. If everyone <laughs> like no. twenty uh, twenty twenty one, like early twenty twenty one, has definitely been like the the year so far of me waiting on something to happen in the summer, for sure, one hundred percent. That has been my twenty twenty one the whole time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we have to make sure we get there for hits. So we gotta, we gotta trudge through these. So, yeah. I can't wait. I we're cannot on, wait. We're on borrowed time. I'm honestly because I, I have not watched Revenge of the Sith once since we started this at all, and and I'm just so so curious to see like uh, how much my rating shifts. I'm so excited. I like as a teaser. I'm sure that will be like the only thing I'll want to talk about, and I'm sure everyone will be really super like, okay, let's talk about something else. And I'll be like, but wait a minute, there's more. Uh, but I'm I'm super stoked. I think it's going to be great. And you know, our number one, uh, you know, our number one, Carbonite Bounty BS contributor. This is episode three is his favorite one. So uh, Thomas will be uh, doing. Episode that's a, that's three a close. That's a close favorite for me too. Yeah. Interesting. Can't wait to see it. But yeah, guys, uh, like I said, thanks for tuning in for this episode. Uh, as we we did a quick shift, so we're going to go one to nine. And for you guys who are, you know, the overachievers, you can start watching, uh, you know, episode three if you'd like after that. And then we'll finish with the final episodes of the Clone Wars. But, uh, yeah, guys, one to nine we'll start at, and that will be the finale part one. Then into the movie, then we'll finish it up with the finale of Clone Wars. And we'll do a wrap-up episode as well, since we'll have a short run on that. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in to us. We're going to do it live. Yeah, we'll do it live. We'll come up with something. We'll come up with something. Yeah, we'll do it live yeah, for you guys. So. Yeah. But yeah, guys, like I said, thanks again for tuning in to us. And obviously, please subscribe, share, and interact with us on all our socials. And until the next week, this is the way. This is the way. Nerdcyclopedia.